Uh, what an honor uh, to be here and a joy. Uh, I first met Peace Love uh, six years ago, and um, they've been feeling, they feel like family ever since. So I can't necessarily share my story without sharing uh, my dad's story. This is him, a word image that I created at 13. Uh, this was um, him as a little boy. Uh, I came to this country from a German village with a dream and a measure of determination. Thanks to the limitless opportunities provided in this great nation, I was able to transform my dream into reality. So how many people know about the sunroof in your car? You have a sunroof? Anyone? Okay, so my dad introduced the sunroof in 1963. This is one of the first pictures. Um, so I'm honored that he's already touched all of us in some way, that he's shared his light with you. Uh, growing up in Germany, he knew that he wouldn't uh, live in the, on the farm and in the, in the village. Uh, he thought that there was something bigger and better. So uh, he sought an apprenticeship in um, the big city, and then he ventured to San Francisco uh, to attend an exchange program. And he never finished school. He didn't graduate. Instead, he uh, started a company, again, American Sunroof Corporation. And this picture is iconic. Um, I found this a little while back, and I thought I would share it with you because it kind of evokes that feeling of entrepreneurship and innovation uh, and just that spirit of I can do anything. So here's my family, and I'm a twin. I have a twin brother. Uh, this is my mom. Uh, she also immigrated from Germany. My parents were married in 77. And uh, at this time, you would think that my dad had everything going for him. He moved recently from uh, L.A., San Francisco area to uh, Detroit, Michigan. He had contracts with the big three. Um, the company was, was booming. And then 1980, 79, 80, there was economic downturn. Uh, my dad uh, experienced loss. He lost his mom to cancer. And um, needless to say, a lot of things were going on. And he was actually recovering from an 18-month depression. Uh, my mom was, was telling me earlier that this is a picture. She had to force him into this family portrait. This was our Christmas picture. Uh, and during that time, keep in mind, my mom was brand new um, to the States. She was raising, just had twins, and now she's, she was taking care of her husband. Uh, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit uh, into my graduation day. But before I do that, I'll, I want to tell you and emphasize that my dad, my experience and my relationship with my dad was not marked by depression. Um, I saw my dad as someone with extreme energy, uh, bigger than life. Everyone wanted to be in the same room with him. His eyes twinkled. Uh, he always had um, something in mind, something to make this world a better place, um, always connecting people, um, always extremely humble. I remember swimming in the ocean with him. He, liked, he loved that. I also remember uh, he had a cattle ranch down in, in Texas that he co-owned, and uh, he was at peace when he was a cowboy. So he loved putting on a sheriff's badge. Um, and... It's the sweetest thing ever. He also had a vest and his, ho his uh, horse, Smokey. Um, so those are the things that I remember. And then this graduation day was pivotal for me um, and for my family. I addressed my class in 98. I said, to go away is to die a little. It is to die to that which one loves. Everywhere and always, one leaves behind a part of oneself. These words from Edmund Harricourt were prophetic in a way because when I left high school, it was as if something died within me. Um, I grew up with high expectation, and I met those expectations. I was class president. I was on homecoming court. Uh, I always knew um, success. I always knew what it was to be driven. Uh, then, not six months later, I was uh, attending Georgetown University in D.C. Uh, freshman year, and I fell into my depression. Uh, I had never known what this was like. Um, it was, I was roaming campus, completely disheveled, um, not really able to even tie my own shoes. Um, taking showers was a chore. I remember dwelling on the Potomac River. I would watch the Potomac River and think, wow, that would be really awesome just to dive in there and never resurface. And then I was admitted into emergency, psych emergency. That was my first experience. Um, and 
And thankfully, I came out of it um, six months later. I was in the hospital a number of times. And um, at the time, too, my dad would talk a little bit about his own depression with me. And things fast forwarded. And it, we, we got to January of 2001. Um, this was inauguration. Uh, and so George W. was just inaugurated. And this was the last time that I saw my dad's light and his spark. Um, I know I'm missing a few steps here, and I should tell you that he was formally diagnosed with manic depression at the time, but he was not formally treated. Uh, and so when he fell into this depression this time around, uh, he had tried to get treatment, but in some ways I felt like it was maybe too late. Uh, so I tried to share with him what I had experienced my freshman year, saying, it's going to be okay, you'll recover just like I did. My parents ended up, they dropped me off in Germany for a study abroad program in April of 2001. Yeah, April of 2001. Uh, a couple months later, on the morning of July 6th, 2001, uh, my mom called uh, my host mom staying in Germany, and she, she said, Stephanie needs to come home right away. And I talked with my mom, and she said, Stephanie, I, something's happened to your dad. He hurt himself. He hurt himself, and he's in the hospital, but... Um, it's going to be okay. You just have to prepare or hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. And so that whole night I prayed, and um, that next morning they rushed me to Frankfurt, and I drove home from, or sorry, flew home Frankfurt to Detroit, and the whole flight I'm praying and clinging on to the stuffed animal that I actually still have. And um, I'm thinking to myself, this can't happen to us. Like, this can't happen to my family. And as soon as I landed, uh, I remember they rushed me through customs, and I get in to this car, and my, my brother is to my right, my mom's to my left, and he said, they shared with me, he's gone. This person who had everything, seemingly, and, you know, and what would help him, I don't know, but um, he, was, he was gone, and the whole universe shifted. I knew that at that moment, every single thing in our lives would change. And so I have no idea how that those next couple of months went on, but uh, I do know that without my mom and her support um, and loving us and um, always taking care of us, I, I don't even know if, if he would have gotten um, to that point. Uh, so, sorry. Um, I was able to go back to school. I enrolled in my classes. And then um, what happens 9-11? 9-11 happens, and uh, it compounded my grief. And so when things happen in your life, and then all of a sudden it starts piling up, I guess my soul reacted in a way um, where it was in a way it was protecting me. Um, I had my first manic episode, and I was diagnosed with bipolar, and um, this became sort of a new term to, to understand and absor absorb. Um, and if anyone's ever been through a manic experience, it's as if you always want to connect all these different dots that are lying around. And I feel like there's this flight of ideas and you're sort of out of character and irritable and the um, story goes on. So um, I graduated from, from Georgetown, which was great, and I uh, worked for the Department of Agriculture. And uh, I was at the Department of Agriculture and I thought, oh my gosh, no, I need to mix this up a little bit because I don't feel... Um, like I'm using my art in any way, and I don't feel like um, I'm, my soul is expressing itself in the right way. So I decided to move cross-country to San Francisco um, and uh, mix up all of my supports. I didn't have any family or friends out there. I, I was taking night classes. Um, I started uh, just drinking a little bit more, and I um, didn't really respect my, my spirit. So I um, was in a severe psychotic state out in San Francisco, walking the streets barefoot. It ended up in an altercation with the police. I won't get into all the details, but um, they ended up, they hogtied me, and I kicked one of the police officers, so I had charges against me. And, um, and then they ended up admitting me in a clinic, and my, my mom came out there. And I remember a psychiatrist saying to my mom, um, I'm sorry, she will never be good again. Those were his quote, that was his quote. Um, and I think it's because at the time I was so high for so long, it scared them and um, they felt as if it was a little bit too much. So, um, oops, it's not working. Oh, there it goes. Sorry. Um, 
So San Francisco happened, and I ended up having to move home to Michigan. And I, I say to people that I attribute a lot of um, my healing to the arts and to writing. Um, this quote is pretty meaningful. It's explore your own latitudes, be a Columbus to whole new continents within you, opening new channels, not of trade, but of thought. Um, and then there's some, some of my artwork surrounding it. Uh, I've also had a, a, a path of treatment that's very unique. Um, everyone has their own. I've gone through multiple med adjustments. I've had ECT, um, which was extremely beneficial. Uh, and I've been very cynical with therapy, and I have yet to really find um, a good, good therapist, and one that really fits with me. So just to share that. And then in recent years, I've found a lot of solace in friendships and my family. I've taken adventures. Um, that's the Great Barrier Reef. And I couldn't get the heart in the other hand, or else I would have done peace love um, while I was diving. And then um, I find also a lot of uh, peace in my volunteer work. I do a ton of volunteer work. And um, these are kids in the Cook Islands. And, and then my dad, his, his first sunroof prototype is actually at the Historical Museum in Detroit, right next to Henry Ford little exhibit. So um, we integrate um, my dad and his spirit um, in most everything that we do. So these three cuties, uh, Annika's in the middle, she's six, and the twins, my brother has twins, um, they will be four in July. Uh, I think about my dad a lot, um, but mostly I think about him when I watch these three grow up, when I'm watching them play or when I'm watching them laugh. And I think to myself that dreams are for generations. And my dad's dream to share, share light with the world is also their dream, and it's our dream. And we, um, in Michigan, what we've been doing at the, the University of Michigan is we've had the Heinz Proctor Bipolar Research Fund. My mom established this fund uh, in 2001, shortly after my dad passed away. And moms are powerful, and you just saw, you witnessed that here um, most recently, right? Yeah, moms are extremely powerful. And, Without my mom's faith, most especially during the down times, when she would take my hand and she would, she would hold it and she would pray with me, and she would say, God, God has you. You, know, you, you give everything to him, he, and the sun will rise again, she would tell me. Um, and she still, she just, she, to this day, carries my dad's spirit with her, and um, they're making extreme strides, so please, please look into that. We also have Ride the Tiger, which is a documentary was recently uh, uh, launched by PBS, and it's a documentary profiling people with bipolar and also the latest science and research. Uh, Clubhouse, anyone heard of Clubhouse? Yes, it's an international model, and I work as a board chair for our local Fresh Start Clubhouse. Uh, awesome model, which it, it, um, motivates people, empowers them, encourages relationships, and um, helps people reintegrate back into the world and, and find pieces of their soul. So Images of Resilience is a photography exhibit that I recently helped um, launch and uh, features some of my own work. Resilience, these are my resili resilience shoes, my favorite word. Uh, and uh, this exhibit has, has been um, pretty inspirational. We have 20 artists um, in and around the area uh, submitting their work. Here is one of my pieces, it's called Sorry, I'm getting dry in my mouth. Peaceful Current. And uh, Peaceful Current is up with, along with other um, images of nature. And so I spoke really, really fast. I don't even know what time we're, I'm. Oh, one more minute. OK, perfect. And then this last slide, I want to um, at least have a minute for this slide. Um, and I also, just in my brain, I thought of this. Every place that I've been, and losing pieces of myself and then gathering it back up again, it's been a bit of a soul journey. And this, this spiritual madness followed by spiritual, you know, thriveness. Um, and my, I guess my, what keeps me going is not only faith and family and support, but this, I think it, it's kind of encapsulated in this quote. I say, find your voice, strengthen it. It's your internal spark, never to be extinguished, the eternal grace that blazes and withers like fire, ebbing and flowing with the tide. 
So I urge you, find your voice, keep finding it, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Give it up for Stephanie.